10 reasons why I became Catholic and why I love being Catholic. I wasn't always Catholic. I was a Protestant. I was even a Protestant minister, and I have attended all different kinds of churches before I became Catholic. Lutheran Church, Methodist Church, Assembly of God, Mega Church, Bible Church, what else? Eastern Orthodox Churches, Anglican Church, Episcopalian, and I became Catholic 17 years ago. And I was thinking, after 17 years, do I still like being Catholic? And the answer is yes. I love being Catholic. It's the pearl of great price. I would give up everything and do it all again to become Catholic. So I'm going to share with you 10 reasons why I like being Catholic. And reason number one is I like going to confession. Now, you may think, well, that's kind of weird. That's like the last thing I would want to do. That's like keeping me away from being a Catholic is going and telling another person, not God, but a Catholic priest, all of my sins. And let me tell you something. Yes, it's a little scary. Sometimes, you know, you get a little sweat on the forehead, a little sweat in the palms before you go into confession. Like, man, I'm going to have to confess these sins. But it is such a relief to go into the confessional box, kind of dark. There's a screen. On the other side of the screen is an ordained priest. He's not God. He's not Jesus. But he's sitting in there to hear your confession and to declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You go in there and you out loud profess with your mouth all of your evil, wickedness, your sins, not just like I'm a sinner. I'm such a bad sinner. You actually say the sins out loud and another person hears them. And then the priest might ask you some questions like, well, why do you think you did that? Or all of your sins are kind of relating to pride or gluttony or lust. Why is that? And there is no hiding. You are spiritually naked. You've confessed everything ugly about yourself. And then you make an act of contrition. That's a prayer showing that you are sorry for your sins. If you're not sorry, it doesn't count. And the priest says, I absolve you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. He also gives you a penance, which is like a, like a token, a prayer, or something you're going to do to show that you are back on the right path. And that's confession. You know, a lot of people go to therapy and they're into cutting themselves and all this stuff dealing with the damage of sin and of regret. And it's just freeing. It's a release to go in and articulate it and then hear out loud with your ears the words of absolution from John chapter 20, where Jesus appears to the apostles and he says to the apostles, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins are forgiven really believe that. Of course, Jesus is the one who died for us. I understand that. He's the one who absolves us, but he does it through this ministry of the church, this ministry of reconciliation. So that's the first reason I like being Catholic. The second reason, boy, I'm just going to really keep ticking off the evangelicals here. I love being Catholic because of the Virgin Mary. Now, yes, I know the Virgin Mary is a human. She's a creature. She's not a goddess. I know that. She didn't die for my sins. She's not the Redeemer. She's not the Savior. But she is the mother of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And in Catholicism, with the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you're not just kneeling at the foot of the cross of Jesus who died for you by yourself. You're kneeling at the foot of the cross next to his mother, the Virgin Mary. Jesus even says on the cross, Behold your mother. There is this beholding in the Catholic Church of the mother. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord in chapter Luke. So when you look at Mary, she's a magnifying glass of the Lord, Jesus Christ. She doesn't take away from Jesus. She magnifies how we see Jesus. And I think the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Catholicism is a reminder that Christianity, the church, is a home. It's a family. The presence of the Virgin Mary makes Christianity cozy, at home, real, familial. Because as Catholics, we don't believe that when someone dies and goes to heaven, that they're somehow out of the game. No, Jesus assigns them. They continue to have influence. And of course, his mother more than anyone, because through her, Jesus came into the world. And she's present at the Annunciation, of course, the Nativity, 
the crucifixion, Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes. Also relating to Mary is you have all these saints that are your brothers and your sisters. They're your friends and they're in heaven and they continue to be your friends. They don't check out. They continue to be influencers on earth. And when you're Catholic, one of the cool things is you get to pick a saint. And I picked St. John the Apostle to be my patron. He's sort of my exemplar, my inspiration, my coach. And I chose John because he placed his head on the chest of Christ at the Last Supper. And then also he was the apostle at the foot of the cross when Jesus said, behold your mother. So John has this very special place in the heart of Jesus. And I wanted John to be my patron saint, my confirmation saint. So the second reason why I love being Catholic is you got the Virgin Mary, you got the saints, and you're part of this big family that transcends earth. It goes all the way up to heaven. The third reason why I like being Catholic is related to the Virgin Mary, and that is the rosary. We pray the rosary. Now, you might think, oh, it's just repeating prayers over and over and over. Hold on. If you really understand the rosary, you understand that the rosary is Bible on beads. Yes, you are praying a set of prayers. You begin with the Apostles' Creed, which is affirming your faith in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you're praying. In the rosary, it's a loop. And it, that loop has 50 beads on it, and they're divided into sections of 10 beads. Right? We call them decades for a 10. And in each one of those sets, you are envisioning and meditating and thinking about one of the scenes or episodes from Scripture. They're all assigned. There's the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, the glorious mysteries. And as you're praying, you're, you're going through these beads. Now, why is that something that I like? Well, I think we should all be praying about one hour a day. That's just me. You know, between making food, eating food, sleeping, going to work, commuting, driving, watching TV, whatever you do, playing sports, one hour is a gift that we should be giving God. And the rosary, if you do the entire rosary, it's 60 minutes, but most people do a third, and that takes about 20 minutes. So the rosary is a way to set 20 minutes aside. And if, you know, if you, whenever you pray, your mind's jumping all around, you know, do I need to pick up the dry cleaning? Did I leave the stove on? You know, all these things. The rosary is like a little, it's a chain that keeps you, these beads are like walking down a path. And so you have this tangible thing that you're holding you have a prayer outline by the mysteries of the rosary, and you're moving along so you can really focus for 20 minutes or 60 minutes, but 20 minutes you can really focus on prayer. I like that because I'm not very good at prayer. The rosary is kind of like training wheels on a bike, right? It keeps you going. Even when you start to swerve or fall over or lose your balance in prayer, the rosary keeps you going, and you're meditating on the Annunciation, the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth, the birth of Jesus, the presentation of Jesus in the temple, finding Christ in the temple when he was 12 years old, the agony in the garden, the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension of all of these things are mysteries of the rosary, and you're praying and meditating on them along the way. For me, I need that. I pray the rosary every day. I invite you to pray the rosary every day. And by the way, if you want to get a rosary, I'll send you a rosary and a book that I wrote called Rosary in 50 Pages. I'll send that to you at a certain level at my Patreon page. If you go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall, I will send you a rosary and a signed copy of that book at the certain level. So check it out. Uh, I'd love to help you out and get you on your journey to understanding the rosary and for praying the rosary. The fourth reason I like being Catholic is going to Mass. All the other Protestant groups, except for the Eastern Orthodox, generally see worship as a Bible study and as singing hymns and songs. There's nothing wrong with studying the Bible. There's nothing wrong with singing hymn, hymns and, and psalms and songs and all that. But the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, which you can go to every day in the Catholic Church, but you're only required to go on Sundays and Holy Days, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we believe is a connection, a transport into the death of Jesus on the cross. So when you go to Mass, you are receiving, you are experiencing the moment in which Jesus dies on the cross. 
at the consecration of the body and blood of Jesus. Jesus says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, John chapter 6. Before he dies, he says, take, eat, this is my body. This is the chalice of my blood, the new covenant. Jesus is very intent on making sure that we need to receive him in the sacrifice of the Mass. That's called the Eucharist. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine who was raised Baptist and was kind of going to a mega church, and he said, you know, sometimes I feel bad because I go to church, I don't feel anything. I kind of want to work myself up to be emotional and excited about Jesus, but I don't, I don't have this like deep emotive feeling I had like when I first became a Christian. I feel guilty about that. And I said, you know, as a Catholic, yes, sometimes, you know, on Holy Saturday or Good Friday or Midnight Mass on Christmas, I'll, I'll cry or I'll feel emotional. But worship from the Catholic point of view is not how I feel, like what I'm bringing emotionally to the service. In Catholicism, I am there to unite myself at the foot of the cross and to receive the benefits of his redemption. Whether I feel that, whether I cry or whatever, doesn't matter. Right? That is the mystery that we are going to experience. So some people may go to a Catholic Mass and say, why isn't everybody hyped up? That's not the point. Like if you went to the crucifixion of Jesus in AD 33, people would not be hyped up, drinking lattes, praise and worship, projectors, fog machines. That would not be it. It would be a solemn immolation of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And so going to Mass is a great comfort. Receiving Holy Communion is even more of a comfort. But ultimately, I've learned, being a Catholic 17 years, worship is entering into the mystical offering of Jesus Christ, offering his body and blood as redemption for atonement to the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. That's what worship is, and we sinners, by grace, get to experience that transcendent, mystical, miraculous motion of Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, offering himself to the Father through the Holy Spirit. So I love going to Mass. Number five, one thing I love about being Catholic is the family values. There's a popular TV show called Blue Bloods. I'm sure you've seen it. Tom Selleck, uh, Donnie Wahlberg. And fans of that show say that one of their favorite part, or maybe their favorite part, is when the family comes together to say grace before meal at the dining table and have family time. And in Blue Buds, they're Catholics, and they always say the Catholic prayer, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, when they sit down to eat. And that kind of shows what Catholic family is all about. Catholics, as you know, have a lot of children. My wife, Joy, and I, we have eight children. When you have a lot of children, that means there's a lot of cousins and aunts and uncles and family connections. And also in Catholicism, we have the honor of being godfather or godmother to children who aren't our children. And that's really cool because it binds families together through infant baptism, and it, it forges long life bonds between generations and between families. And it creates this safety net for our children in case something should happen to us. There's all these other connections. That's a cool thing about being a Catholic. The big families, the interconnectedness, the godfathers, the godmothers, the godchildren. It's just a very beautiful way to live. And I know there's other faiths, denominations, and religions who have big families and strong family connections. But in Catholicism, it's definitely a reality, and I'm very glad that my children are born into that and that they experience the large family with all the cousins and nephews and uncles and godbrothers and godsisters. It's awesome. And if you want to learn more about Catholicism, I teach at the New St. Thomas Institute. I'm the founder and a professor at New St. Thomas Institute. We do online courses on Old Testament, New Testament, apologetics, philosophy, church history, theology, everything from a Catholic point of view. So if you want to study Thomas Aquinas or the New Testament or St. Augustine or learn all about the Blessed Virgin Mary or the seven sacraments, we have 
11 different courses that you can take online that cover all of these topics. So if you want to sign up, I'd encourage you to go to nsti.com. That's New St. Thomas Institute, nsti.com, and sign up as a member and get started. You can earn your own certificate in theology, philosophy, apologetics, Bible, church history. It's all there. Go to nsti.com and become a student. Also, if you want to move where you are and move to a different part of the country, perhaps we can have better family values or find a better Catholic church, I encourage you to go to realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. They'll help you sell your house where you are and buy another house where you want to go. Okay, let's get back to the 10. Number six reason why I like being Catholic, Catholics help people. And I like that because ultimately I'm a selfish person. I don't want to help people. But in Catholicism, there's this idea that, yes, you have to have faith in Jesus Christ. You have to love God, but you also have to love your neighbor. Catholics really stress Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus says, you know, when you fed the hungry, you fed me. When you gave drink to the thirsty, you gave drink to me. When you clothed the naked, you were clothing me. When you visited the sick, you were visiting me. That aspect of Christianity is amplified in Catholicism. I know a lot of evangelicals look at Catholics and like, you're, you're all into works, works-based righteousness. Mm, no, our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ through faith, but we are also called to do good works, to love God and to love others. We have to do it. When I was a Protestant, you could say, well, I'm justified by faith alone. His righteousness is imputed to me. I'm kind of good. I don't have to do anything. And it kind of leads to a spiritual slothfulness. Whereas in Catholicism, it's like, no, you are saved. You must do good. You must help people. And the Catholic Church is known for founding hospitals and schools and orphanages and all kinds of care for people. And we are called and invited to do the same. So I have to get up and I have to donate, give alms, spend time, volunteer, and help those who are less fortunate. I have to do it. Because Jesus says, to the extent that you did not feed the hungry, you did not feed me. You did not clothe the naked, you did not clothe me. And then he says, depart from me, I never knew you. He separates the sheep and the goats based on how we love other people because love reveals the heart. So I like being a Catholic because I'm held to a higher standard. Not that I want to be, not that I do well at it, but I am held to a standard of helping other people and helping the poor and the lesser privileged and those who are down and out, discouraged. And I need that. I need that kick in the pants. Number seven, the reason why I like being Catholic, you're probably not going to believe this one either. I like the fasting and the penance. And you might think, I, I don't like that at all. Not eating food, doing penance, that sounds miserable. Lent, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, all this penance. You can't eat uh, meat on Fridays. You have to fast before receiving communion on Sunday mornings. That means no breakfast on Sunday mornings. Like fasting and penance, why would you like that? Here's the thing. We live in a luxurious society. We have air conditioning, heating, dozens and dozens of shoes and pants and clothes and air conditioning in our cars. We have fast food and mo most people are overweight because there's so much food. So we live in an indulgent and luxurious society. And as far as I can tell, except for the Eastern Orthodox, the only religion out there saying you must fast, you must do penance, you must do things to make yourself uncomfortable on purpose for your spiritual benefit is the Catholic Church. We have days set out as days of fasting. Every Friday is a day of penance. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross on Friday and he rose on Sunday. So for the Catholic, Friday is the day of suffering, of penance. You don't eat meat, you eat less food. And Sunday is the day of celebration because it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you have your family over, you have great food, you have fellowship, you don't go to work, you know, you, you recreate, you, you have a good time. And that's part of this Catholic family culture. And you see that all over the world. But there's a balance to that. Like it can't always be a party. 
there also has to be the fasting. So every Easter requires a good Friday. That's a good way of thinking about it. And I think Catholicism keeps that balance, right? Where we have to say no to ourselves. You know, the Old Testament is all about fasting. And Jesus also says that we will fast when they take the bridegroom away. He was the bridegroom. So now that he's been taken away, we fast. And fasting is a way, Jesus says, that drives out demons, overcomes evil. So as a Catholic, I like the fact that I am required. I am called upon to be a person of repentance and of fasting. The number eight reason for being a Catholic that I enjoy is it's a global community. As a Catholic, I have been able to forge friendships all over the world. I have Catholic friends that have the same values, the same beliefs. For example, we're all pro-life. We all don't believe in divorce. We all believe in traditional family. Um, we all believe in transubstantiation, purgatory, infant baptism, and we're all fans of the same people, the Catholic saints, and we all know the same Catholic saints, and we're inspired in the same way. So when I meet someone from another country who's a practicing Catholic, we immediately connect because we have the same belief system and we have the same pattern of life. So if it's Lent, we're keeping Lent. Or if I say, hey, what time is Mass on Sunday in, I don't know, Austria? They know the Mass times. They know how to get there. We already have, even though we're separated by continents, we already have the same life and the same lifestyle and the same faith. So that's true if they're in the UK, Argentina, Mexico, Singapore, even Canada, even those people in Catholics in Canada, there is this global community and we get each other and we're connected. That's not really true of other faiths, except maybe Islam, um, not even Eastern Orthodox has the same spread over planet Earth, over the globe, as we do as Catholics. And for me, as I travel all over the world, it's great to have these international connections where we're almost already friends, we're associates right out the gate. And that kind of relates to the ninth reason why I like being Catholic, and that is there's this historical connection Right? It's not like my denomination was started in the 1800s or in the 1500s by Martin Luther or John Calvin or Cramner or Henry VIII. Catholicism has an organic connection, like a thread going through every century, 1900s, 1800s, all the way back to AD 33. It's ancient. When I go to an ancient cathedral in Europe, and I walk in there, it's not like a museum piece. When I go into an ancient church, that's my home. Those people who built that cathedral or that basilica or that small country parish where I'm at, the people who built that built that, yes, for them to worship and to go to mass and to pray and do devotions. But they also built it knowing that it would be inherited by the future Catholics. And I'm one of those future Catholics. So when I go into these beautiful churches, whether it's in you know, Mexico or Italy or you name it, even Northern Africa, I am home. I am connected historically with all these places, with all these Christians, with their writings, with their prayers, with their liturgies. So yeah, I mean, number eight was there's a global current connection, but there's also this retroactive connection as a Catholic that I have with all these people, all these churches, and all these places. And number 10, the 10th reason why I like being a Catholic is we have a really rich culture of art and an intellectual tradition that really no one can compete with. When you talk about philosophy, Catholics have been engaging Jewish philosophers, Muslim philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, the Stoics, Confucius, even modern thinkers like Nietzsche. The Catholic Church has been fully engaged in philosophy, research, science for 2,000 years, and there's a massive intellectual tradition. I love St. Thomas Aquinas. 
That's why the new St. Thomas Institute is named New St. Thomas Institute. It's after Thomas Aquinas. But also there's this culture of art. You know, so when you go to the Sistine Chapel, that's not just like art on a canvas. That is art created to draw your heart, your soul, your mind upward to heaven. It's a culture of art with art as a means of worship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as a Catholic, whether it's beautiful art in a, in a small mission chapel in California or looking at, I don't know, the David or Leonardo, these, I don't even want to call them pieces of art because that trivializes everything. These monuments of sanctity, these windows into the heavenly realm, these portals that let us transcend where we are and see the realities of heaven, that right there, I think, is a very attractive and affirming part of being a Catholic. So those are my top 10 reasons for being Catholic. I'll say probably the worst part about being a Catholic. All right, so I'm going to give you the download and download and dirty. The worst part about being Catholic is because we're 2,000 years old, we have had scandals, pedophilia, sexual scandals, embezzlement, bad popes, bad bishops, bad priests, bad laymen bad kings. There is a bad legacy over 2,000 years. And if you're a member of like a mega church that was founded in 1994, you know, maybe your church has one scandal in it and you can kind of shrug it off. But when you're Catholic, people say, well, yeah, your church did this or your people did this. And that is difficult. How do I overcome that? Really? I can't. It's like someone saying your crazy uncle was a drunk and he ran over a kid and he's in your family. Yes, don't approve of it. We're ashamed of it. We don't like it. But yes, that is part of the family, and we don't like it. That's the hardest thing about being a Catholic. Does it keep me from being a Catholic? Do I want to leave the Catholic Church? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I will say, as a Catholic, that is the most difficult thing about being a Catholic. So there are the 10 reasons why I love being a Catholic. Leave a comment. I want to hear, if you're a Catholic, give me three things you like about being a Catholic. What did I miss? If you're not a Catholic, leave a comment and tell me why you're not a Catholic. I want to be involved in the comments on this video, especially. And if you want to know the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism, check out this video I did. It's very popular, the 10 differences between Catholics and Protestants.